Okay, so uh, since we were talking about uh, aldehydes and ketones today, I want to finish up talking about a couple other reactions that they uh, sort of undergo. And uh, then we'll maybe do a couple more examples of maybe drawing some of these things. Um, so as we were uh, talking about today, obviously aldehydes and our ketones, they actually can... Uh, undergo go, uh, certain types of reactions uh, with alcohols. So they can react with alcohols. So uh, we can either have our aldehyde, our ketone uh, reacting really with an alcohol. So whenever you're sort of dealing with a aldehyde or a ketone, it's really all about that carbonyl group. That's pretty much where everything happens. So I think we talked about it a little bit as we're going through some of these chapters, uh, when there is sort of a reaction that occurs with an organic group or compound, really there's kind of really only one spot in most cases that we deal with in here uh, that something occurs to it. And everything else in the compound again remains the same. So it's really important not to get uh, crazy in terms of drawing things, you know, making rings, breaking rings, putting things together. You know, for the most part, everything pretty much stays the same, uh, which means you pretty much have your structure that you need to draw in front of you. You just got to change that one little part that uh, will change. And pretty much that one part that will change is pretty much where that functional group is. So, you know, that's pretty much the only thing that will change. So let's talk about what's going to happen here. And pretty much in these type of reactions, as I mentioned, everything's pretty much going to revolve around, you know, our carbonyl location. So that's pretty much where everything's going to happen. Everything else is going to uh, basically be the same. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a reaction of an aldehyde with an alcohol and sort of what we get. And it really depends on sort of how many alcohols you add to the aldehyde. Uh, so you could add one alcohol, which will give you something at the end of it, which we'll talk about in just a second, or you could add two alcohols, which will kind of take you one more step past that midpoint. So let's start with just an aldehyde and we'll just do a nice basic simple aldehyde here to look at. So we'll do ethanol here. And we're going to add a nice little simple alcohol as well. And uh, we will do, uh, let's just do methanol here, which is this guy here. So this is methanol, methanol, OL, uh, which is our alcohol. And obviously this is our ethanol, which is our aldehyde. So basically what's going to happen when we do this addition here of just this one alcohol to our aldehyde is we're kind of kind of do basically an, an addition reaction. So it's very similar to what we talked about when we had the carbon-carbon double bond and we just put the two things on. The same thing is going to happen here. Just like in the carbon-carbon double bond before we could actually put those things on, we have to get rid of the double bond. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. So we kind of have to make room for everything to attach. Now, when we need to make room for it, it is going to be right here. So what is going to happen is everything's going to stay the same. We're just going to make room for these things to come in. And we're going to, again, turn our double bond into a single bond. Just going to redraw it exactly the way it is. So again, I'm just going to copy pretty much what's there, which is helpful. And again, I'm going to turn my double bond into a single bond in this case. And I'm going to have my hydrogen. Now, how do we know where maybe things will end up? We could kind of think about it as sort of opposites attract, right? So positive to negative, negative to positive. So if you remember earlier, we talked about the carbon-oxygen double bond, and really the carbon is more positive, and the oxygen is more negative in this case, right? So I'll just kind of put like a little positive there, a little negative there for the time being. And that's going to be really helpful for pretty much where our alcohol is going to go. 
Um, so actually, well, I'll put it over here, actually, too, plus and negative. When we look at the alcohol, the alcohol is actually going to add in two different ways. It's going to add basically an H, which is H plus, and this is going to add as this oxygen carbon group here. And that's the two ways that they're going to add. You could also think of these guys as kind of having charges when they break apart. Right now they don't, but this is really going to be an H plus. And that's going to be like an OCH3 negatively charged. And that's going to help us understand sort of where they go. So since opposites attract, our hydrogen will be attracted to the negative oxygen. And then this group here, which is negative, will be attracted to the positive carbon. And that's pretty much where they're going to end up on the other side. So if we do that, and I'll erase my positive negative on this side here. We're going to end up with the hydrogen, I'll draw it in blue over here. And then this sort of oxygen carbon group that gets attached right there. Now, when we add one alcohol to an aldehyde like this, we get this guy that's made here. And this is what is sometimes referred to as a hemiacetal. So what are the major sort of parts of a hemiacetal? It is this part here. You look at the, you look at the carbon here and attached to this carbon, I'll put it in the box. There is a hydrogen, there is an OH group, and there is an oxygen carbon type group attached. So those three things need to be attached to that carbon for it to be a hemiacetal. Hemi basically means it has an OH group there. And acetal, because it comes from an aldehyde, is basically kind of where that name comes from. Any questions on that there? All right. So what's going to happen next is this hemiacetal can actually then take on another alcohol. So you could add a second alcohol to this. This is sort of like a step-by-step -step sort of process is occurring. So if we take our hemiacetal, which we just made there, and we add another alcohol, and we'll just add the same alcohol here. So we're gonna add one more alcohol here. And we'll do the same guy. Could be a different guy, but we'll just do the same guy here. So that's our methanol, which is our alcohol. And this is our hemiacetal. Now, in this particular case, uh, what's going to happen is we're actually going to make water in this case. So where the water comes from is actually from the OH group and the hydrogen from the alcohol. So those two guys through a lot of process that we don't need to get into, but a lot of things will happen. And those two guys will come together basically and make water. So that is where our water is gonna go. So we'll make some water here. Now, What's going to happen to the rest of the hemiacetal is, frankly, it's going to stay the same. So nothing is going to change on the rest of that guy. So we will draw it exactly the same. So we have an H, a C, an H, an H, a C, an H, an O, and a CH3. But now if you look at where that water sort of came from or where the OH was, there's now kind of a space, right? And we can't really have the carbon like that because carbon has how many bonds here? Only three, right? So it needs four. So the rest of the alcohol outside of the hydrogen is going to actually end up here because actually what happens to this guy is he actually becomes more positive. And that negative side of that alcohol will be attracted to it and it will find its way over there. So what will happen at this point is this guy is really going to become more positive once again like above this guy is going to be more negative and it's basically going to go right there 
and that is going to put on another oxygen carbon type of group onto this guy. And this is what is known as a acetal. And the difference between a hemiacetal and an acetal is when we look at this carbon, this carbon has a hydrogen and two oxygen carbon groups attached. And those oxygen carbon groups basically come from the alcohols that are put there. So, so if you add one alcohol to an aldehyde, you will stop at the hemiacetal and you'll have that OH group there. If you add a second alcohol to it, that OH will come off as water and that other oxygen carbon from the alcohol will go on in its place, sort of substituting out for it. Now, a ketone works pretty much similar to this reaction. Pretty much the same thing will happen if you start with a ketone and add a couple of alcohols to it. So let's take a look at that here. So if we started with just a nice, simple ketone here, we'll just do our three carbon ketone. And if we add an alcohol, and again, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same alcohol, we'll do this guy instead. We'll do ethanol, which is obviously our alcohol. And we'll do here, which is our ketone, and that is propanone. So the same thing's gonna happen here as it did on the last one. We could think of the alcohol as basically two parts kind of a positive part and a negative part. So the hydrogen being the positive part and the oxygen carbon part of it being really more the negative part. And we have our same carbonyl group here where this guy is positive, this guy is negative. So very much like the last one, the exact same sort of thing is gonna happen. We're going to turn that double bond into a single bond. And we're basically gonna put each of those parts into the proper spot. So once again, here, our positive hydrogen will kind of go towards the negative oxygen. Our negative oxygen carbon group will head towards that carbon there. And obviously, we do need to turn it into a single bond to allow it to attach. And if we do that, again, nothing changes other than I'm going to make that into a single bond. And now that I made it into a single bond, I could put my groups that are coming in from the alcohol on. And again, we will get a hydrogen here and we will get that oxygen carbon group that is the other part of the alcohol, basically, in this case. So once again, by adding just one sort of alcohol here, we get that OH group. And this is also sometimes in some books called a hemiacetal. Some books will also call this a hemiketal. And that's because it comes from a ketone rather than an aldehyde. And again, some books will call it hemiacetal, both of them. Um, and, but some will also call it a hemiketal. Any questions on that so far? <clears throat> so just like the aldehyde, we could add a second alcohol to our hemiketal here. And it will do, again, a very similar type of reaction as which we saw. We again are going to make water in this case. And I'll just add a maybe smaller alcohol here. It doesn't really matter. I will do the same alcohol. And once again here, we're going to make water in the second step. And that second step water is again going to come from the hydrogen from the alcohol. and the OH group from our hemiketal. So again, those two are gonna to come together to make water, which is H2O. So uh, again, OH from our hemiketal, H from our alcohol going to make our water. And once again, our carbon here is more positive. And our second part of our alcohol here is more negative. So once again, once that sort of OH gets moved off of there, that negative guy is going to be attracted to the positive carbon. 
and pretty much everything's going to be the same except I'm going to put that on there. So that would get me this guy here, this guy, this guy, and this. And then I'm going to put the other group on there that comes from that alcohol. Let's make it in orange. Oh, CH2, CH3. This is what is sometimes referred to as a ketal. Now, what is the difference between sort of a ketal and a hemiketal versus an acetal and a hemiacetal? The difference is what is actually not here. In a hemiketal, the carbon has the OH group attached. It has the oxygen carbon group but no hydrogen is there as like you have with the acetal. And for our ketal, it's like an acetal, except that it also has no hydrogen. And that's because it didn't start with the hydrogen like the aldehyde. The aldehyde started with the hydrogen and keeps it along the pathway. Uh, this carbon again has two oxygen carbon groups. And again, no hydrogen. The reason it doesn't have hydrogen is because it has a carbon group basically attached to it. Any question on those reactions? So again, uh, if you take an aldehyde or a ketone and you add just one alcohol to it, you'll get either a hemiacetal or a hemiketal, which should have an OH group on, on top and an oxygen carbon type group on the bottom. If you add two alcohols to an aldehyde or a ketone, it will take you all the way to the end to an acetal or a ketal, where you'll end up with no OH groups, but two oxygen carbon groups. And they both come, the oxygen carbon groups always come from the alcohols. Any questions about that? All right, so let's take a look at some of these reactions we talked about today, and maybe we'll give you a chance to draw some of these. So let's do, um, let's do this here. Let's do, All right, let's uh, oxidize this guy. And then whatever you get there, let us oxidize it again. And let's do... Um, add some hydrogen to this guy. All right, so take a moment there, draw what you should get out of the result of each of these reactions. Okay, let's take a look to see how you're doing. So first off, good to identify maybe what things are. So here we have an alcohol. And more specifically, uh, we have the carbon that has the OH group attached to it, and it is attached to one other carbon. Uh, which means it is a primary alcohol. So as we talked about earlier, this is how we can basically make an aldehyde. That is what you get when you do the oxidation, which is this symbol. Remember, as you go from sort of the alcohol to the aldehyde, we're going to use the definition of oxidation, uh, which is basically the loss of H2. And the H2 always comes from the same sort of location. One of the H's should always be attached to the oxygen. The other H should be attached to the carbon that is part of that carbon oxygen double bond or where the carbon oxygen is right now. Uh, that will give you some H2. 
Now, what's left to do at this point is pretty much just draw everything that's there without those two hydrogens. Just going to take them off. So I'm not going to think too much about it here. I'm just going to recopy pretty much what's there. And again, obviously, I'm going to remove the two hydrogen that I needed to. When I remove two hydrogens, really the purpose for that is I then need to actually put a bond in that place. Otherwise, again, the carbon oxygen will not have enough bonds. Really, the carbon will not have enough bonds, nor will the oxygen have enough electrons as it will both only really have six. So we're always going to insert the double bond there to make our carbonyl group uh, between the carbon and the oxygen. That also, if I didn't miss my carbon there, I'd make it bigger. Uh, that also makes the functional group that we should expect to happen here, uh, which is we should get a aldehyde in this case, which is that guy right there. Again, nothing else changes. Again, don't do anything weird. Just take the hydrogen out, put a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. You'll be in good shape. Any questions on that one there? Now, this aldehyde, as we talked about earlier today, can actually continue through the oxidation process. Uh, one good way to sort of remember it is at this point, there is really kind of no two hydrogens to remove. So it does go to sort of really the other definition of oxidation, which is uh, we're going to gain oxygen as we kind of go from one step to the next. Now, in this situation, the oxygen will always end up right there next to the, ox next to the hydrogen. So we're going to really... Again, just copy what's there. And we're going to insert the oxygen, which is really the other sort of definition of oxidation. So again, I'm gonna do nothing more than copy my aldehyde exactly the way it is. But here I am going to insert my oxygen there. And that again is going to give us what we talked about earlier, our carb carboxylic acid, which is another functional group here in organic chemistry. And really the only thing that we did is basically insert the oxygen right there to make our carboxylic acid group. And that also would classify obviously as an oxidation reaction. Any questions on any of those there? <clears throat> Okay, so looking at the uh, next one, uh, we'll sort of identify what we're starting with here. And here we are starting with a ketone. And once again, you could see the ketone from our three carbons in a row, obviously with our double bonded oxygen there in the middle. Here we're going to add hydrogen, uh, which is really a definition of a reduction reaction. So this is really a reduction reaction that's going to occur. And really in this case, the hydrogen gets added just like we do with alkenes. And we do need to make room for the hydrogen. So once again, as we talked about earlier, pretty much everything's going to occur right here at sort of the functional group or the carbonyl group. Now, basically H2 just means that we're going to add two hydrogens. And much like when we add it to two carbons that have a double bond, each carbon gets a hydrogen. Same thing here when we have a carbon and oxygen double bond, oxygen gets a hydrogen, carbon gets a hydrogen, and it basically added that way. We do need to make our double bond into a single bond. So this is like almost identical to those alkene reactions that we talked about. Uh, so here, once again, everything's going to happen right here. And we're going to just copy exactly what's there. Once again, turning our double bond into a single bond. So I'm just going to, once again, pretty much just copy this guy letter for letter, pretty much. Except here, obviously, I'm going to turn this into a single bond rather than a double bond. And now we still have the guy at the end. So now that I did that, pretty much, we're going to put a hydrogen on the oxygen and we're going to put a hydrogen on the carbon that's attached to the oxygen. And really, if you just want to think about it, that's going to allow this guy to kind of complete out. So we'll put a hydrogen here and we will put a hydrogen there. And that is each of these hydrogens ends up in each of those locations. And at this point, we now end up with an alcohol. And as we would expect, 
This alcohol is a secondary alcohol as that carbon is attached to two other carbons and that gets your secondary alcohol. This is the reverse reaction basically to making a ketone, right? We take a secondary alcohol, we oxidize it, you get a ketone. You add the hydrogen back in, it goes back the other way, and you get basically your alcohol back in this particular case. Any questions on that one there? Lastly here, we have a aldehyde and an alcohol. So this is going to be the reaction that we just talked about here at the beginning. Uh, this is going to be our hemiacid tau reaction. And once again, even though it looks really big or anything like that, it is still going to be that carbon oxygen double bond, which is pretty much where everything's going to occur. This again is more positive. This guy is more negative. And as we talked about previously here, uh, we could think of the alcohol as again, two parts of how it sort of adds in. We are going to have our hydrogen part, which is really like H plus. And we'll have our oxygen carbon part, which is really more negative. So just like uh, we were talking about before, the positive H is going to be attracted to the negative oxygen. The negative oxygen carbon part will find its way over there to that carbon. But once again, we do need to make room for it. So we can't just kind of put it in there with the bonds like they are. Otherwise, we will end up with too many bonds. So we're going to copy our original structure, but we're just going to again go into turn our double bond into a single bond to allow room for everything to attach. And we will go here. And again, uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one more. And again, we're going to turn this into a single bond and our hydrogen. And now we're ready really to add in uh, what we need right there where we turned it into a single bond. Uh, so just like we talked about, the H is going to go to the top. The oxygen carbon group will end up there off the bottom. And if we do that, I'll put it here, H. And the rest of that alcohol just goes on here. And this will make our hemiacetal. And again, what makes it a hemiacetal is that carbon right there as a OH group, as an oxygen carbon group, and it does have the hydrogen. So those are the three main things that make it a hemiacetal. The rest of this entire thing, exactly the same as it started. So. Keep it really simple when you're drawing these sort of products. Don't do anything weird. Very little weird things happen. You know, pretty much just that one spot needs to change. Any questions on any of those there? All right. Let's try a couple more here, maybe. Let's see. Let's do... that guy Now let's mix that. Let's do a few different things that we talked about so far. Here, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do... All right, draw the products of those things. 
Okay, let's take a look. Uh, so first one is oxidation. Once again, uh, this is a alcohol. And this is a secondary alcohol. Again, that is a carbon, carbon, carbon. And that carbon that it's attached to the OH group is attached to two carbons directly. So it is a secondary alcohol. And this means it's an alcohol going through an oxidation reaction, which means we're going to remove H2. We know that we should always remove the H from the OH group, and we should also remove the H from the carbon that's attached to it. And although it is in line structure, there is another hydrogen that is sitting right there. And that is the second hydrogen that would come off. And that would give us our H2. And in this case here, everything else would look the same. We would now have to double bond our oxygen to the top there. And that would then make our ketone like we would expect it to be in this case. And again, our ketone would be one carbon, two carbons, and three carbons with the double bond there in the middle. Any questions on that one there? What, what, say again? Yes, I assume there's another hydrogen. There is another hydrogen, yeah. So when we have it, uh, remember carbon needs to have uh, four bonds, which means uh, in this particular case, uh, it has one bond coming in, one bond coming up, one bond coming in from that side. That means that there has to be that hydrogen sitting there, yeah. It is obviously not usually drawn in that case because it's a uh, kind of line structure and stuff like that, but it definitely is going to be there. No. Other questions? Okay. On this one here, uh, we actually have an alkene in this case, right? This is an alkene. And whenever we have an alkene, it is the carbon-carbon double bond that's most important, and it's going to do an addition reaction. So as we've talked about a number of times up to this point, we need to make room for those things to come in. So we do need to turn it into a single bond. And once again, everything else is going to be exactly the same here. So I'm just going to kind of really just copy from what I got here. So that's a carbon, a hydrogen, hydrogen. Obviously, when I get to the double bond, we're going to make it into a single bond to make room for it. And then we will continue on. And now that we have made room for it, uh, we pretty much have a spot here and a spot here that we could add of our HBr. This is a unsymmetrical addition that we talked about. And remember that whenever you add hydrogen and something else besides hydrogen, like HBr, water, H2O, HCl, you do want to make sure that the hydrogen doesn't need to go to a specific spot. And remember, there's the Markovnikov rule, which is in a case when you're doing an unsymmetrical addition to an alkene or to the double bond in this case, uh, the hydrogen should always go to the one that had the most hydrogens to begin with if there is a difference. In this particular case, when we look at it, this carbon has only one hydrogen in the double bond, and this one has only one hydrogen in the double bond, which means it doesn't really make a difference in this case. You could put them on either one if you like in this case. But if there was a difference, the one that had the most hydrogen should get the hydrogen and then the other element would go to the other spot. So in this case, it really doesn't matter. Um, you will then uh, perhaps uh, put a hydrogen here and a BR here in this particular case. And this would give us an out right, which is what we get when we kind of do this thing. And if we were to name this alkane, this is uh, one, two, three, four carbons, which is butane. And a carbon number two, this would be two bromyl butane. Now, the reason it doesn't matter in this case is if you connected it the other way. And instead of putting the uh, bromine on the right there, put it here, you decided to do it the other way and put the bromine here and the hydrogen here. 
if we were going to name this, this would be one, two, three, four butane. And we would then would number this way, which would put it as two bromobutane. So that's why it doesn't make a difference where you put it in this case, because they both started with the same. So that's why that's the difference that is there. Any questions on that? Up there? <clears throat> Lastly, here we have really a cycloalkene, uh, and it works really the same way as the one we just did. Uh, everything's going to happen here. And remember, that's basically our carbon carbon double bond that we got going on. So that really is just our carbon carbon double bond. So in this case, we do need to make room for the bromines to come in. And since it is Br2, we're pretty much just adding bromine to each side. So we're going to make it into a single bond here. And in this case, one side will get the Br and the other side there will get the Br in this case. This is what it's sometimes referred to as a symmetrical addition. You're basically adding two of the same things. Yeah. Any questions on any of those there? All right, questions on any of this stuff we've been talking about here. All right, I'll lay it up there for now. But with, are you asking what would the, the, the result thing be called or? Is that what you're asking what the name of that guy is? Okay, so I just wanna make sure. Uh, yeah, so the, the big ring here would be cyclo, hexane right as is now single bonded right and we do have two groups and both of those would be bromo groups in this case and since there's two of them it would be a dibromo so this would be dibromo cyclohexane we do need to give actually some numbers here right and in this case since it is the same one and two yeah so this would be one comma two dash uh dibromo cyclohexane yeah other questions on that? 